Betty and I, we cuddled those rules. <laughs> that was little girl, that was you, work. And when um, and that day was up, we pretty well had our way a cut. When school started, my father would keep us out of school for about six weeks. So you wouldn't go to any school? Any school at all for about six weeks till we got through with all the cut. And now the what, peas and everything. Now what, what time of year? That would be in the fall? That would be in the fall. So how would you catch up on your studies? Well, when we started back to school, the teachers would work with us. And one thing about us, there was nine of us children. I think hey. it was about mm -hmm. five or six of us who finished high school. Of course, yeah. back then, it was so smart you didn't have to go for 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter how bad uh, the view was out there, you still win. Mm -hmm. I don't care how wet you got. And that just made me so angry to get up that wet, you know. But you still had to pick cotton with all that dew on it. But I always prayed for it to rain. I was like, Janine, if it rained while I was picking cotton, I just said, thank you, Lord, and we'd get to go home. And by the time it quit raining, Daddy would say, grab your sacks and let's go back. And that was so bad, you have to go pick wet cotton. And now, when you were out there picking, did you do anything to amuse yourself? I mean, did you? Would sing. You would sing. Uh, get on our knees and we talk to the next person. You could do anything with your work. All kinds of things. Just dream up all kinds of things that you'd rather be doing. Like what would you dream up? What, what do you... Uh, well, you'd like you were like you going out that night. You pretend you were going out. <laughs> even though you were a kid and one roller skating or bicycle riding and stuff like that. That was to keep your mind off picking the hot. Sure. That way you could go fast. We were sharing Well, I worked for my grandmother. We lived on my grandmother in her own farm. And when we got through uh, with our work, our, how we made a little extra money, my father would hire us out to other people that was behind with their car. Mm -hmm. And we would go help them. Mm -hmm. And uh, however much cotton we picked, however much they paid for paint. Well, then that was our money. But we were told when we got that money out exactly what we had to do with it. We had to buy clothes with it, school clothes and things. I had good feelings. I wouldn't trade that. I wouldn't trade my life then for anything they have now. Really? Why is that? Well, you learn values and you learn how to do things. You learn how to pride and all that. What kind of values would you learn from them? Well, you learn the value of, of, of um, making something out of something. Mm. You take the earth and you uh, you get cotton, you make clothes out of it. You have flowers, and you just learn the value of, of, of beauty, uh -uh. to appreciate beauty. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, but Lord, I would never want to go back to it. <laughs> I was about 12. I reckon I was 12 years old before uh, when I did it. One uh, year I said, well, uh, I told my mother and father I was going to work in picking a speck. And you have to cut, cut it with a long knife. Mm -hmm. And this year I wanted me an Easter dress and a, and a pair of shoes. And I was going to work for them. I went from when the sun was coming up and the sun was going down when I left the field. So when I went to get my money at 12 o'clock, I worked five days and a half with the grown people. And the man came out and looked at, at my stuff to see whether I was doing it right. I said, go on, Gail, you're doing it right. So I worked and worked and worked that day until 12 o'clock and he sent us about seven, eight cents out there to me. Seven or eight seven cents? Seven to eight. Seven to eight. Oh, seventy eight cents. Yeah, out there by uh, another lady. A lady. So uh, I went home crying. Because oh, yeah. uh, if I had made two dollars or uh, either a dollar and a half, I could have bought me a pair of shoes for ninety eight cents and a dress for a dollar uh, for forty nine cents <coughs> at that time. A pretty organ dress. I wanted that dress. I went home crying. And my daddy didn't know what to say, but he couldn't say nothing because it was just that day. Oh, it sounds good. Worked for nothing. I worked for nothing. And it hurt. Yeah, it did hurt. Mm -hmm. well, if you and me and sharecropping, you planted the seed in the land, and the fertilizer quite natural, 
I'll have to plant it and work it and gill it and sell it. And when that that particular time, then you split that money plus half of if you have corn, half of the corn, half of the peanut, half of the anything was made on that man land. See, that doesn't uh, sound very fair. No. That's what it, that, that's what, that's what it is. But I can hardly imagine raising 16 children when I did. working from, what time would you get up in the morning? Oh, about well, five, well, uh, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And what time would you come in at night? From well, before you start cooking dinner, oh, I mean. You mean supper? Yeah, before that, when you come in from the field, what time oh, would you come we, in? We did the field sometimes about 11 30. In the morning? Yeah, for five. 12. And then. But I go to field 6 30. I see, 6 30. And then would you Rocked go back 12, after, yeah. after you have. Yeah, I'd rock the. But 11.30, mm -hmm. from 6.30 to 11.30. Right. Come back and give the kids something to eat. Right. I'd be all eat dinner. Right. Go back by one. Mm-hmm. And walk to eight and about six. Okay, and then you come back and make and supper. Cook, make supper. Got to feed the children. I can hardly imagine s doing that. Mm -hmm. Working, mm -hmm. how many hours? 6.30 to 11.30, uh, five hours, hours in the field. Uh, yeah. Two mm -hmm. to six is another, mm -hmm. so almost yeah. 10 hours yeah. in the field, mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm taking care of 16 and children, right. mm -hmm. and not only did you have to feed them, you had to, mm -hmm. you know, worry about mm -hmm. their clothes and... Yeah, I washed them, washed them until 12 o'clock, and mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to me that is just inspiring. Yeah, I think you deserve it. a medal. I done it, too. <laughs> I done it, too. It's, I, I done it. Now, how could you do it? And then you walk with the white man, you want to do right. Right. When you come to the end, you want to have no trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. See? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So you have to do things perfect. We will get to the end, you can be perfect. Right. Oh, it was rough, but the Lord brought us through. I'm kind of glad I come through. Yeah. Yeah. When you think back on that times, what do you remember mostly about it? Was it how, how hard the work was? No, oh. how, how tough it was. How tough, how poor how tough everybody was. was. Yeah. How tough it was. Did you ever think it would get better? Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know whether it would, but I had hoped that it would have. Yeah. And uh, it did, too. Yeah. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen? You've lived, seen most of the century. Or what, was, what did you not expect that's happened? Uh, really not. Huh? Not a whole lot, tell you the truth. It's just somewhat different. Uh, you could. Now, if you, I was living on a man's place, and he tell me what I had to do. And things got got different from that. Now, you, you was your own boss. You could do what you want to do. That's a lot better. A whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Monday morning, if you didn't show up there to plow that man mule, You'd soon be to your house to find out why. Mm. And if you can't, he said, well, give him his house. Mm. And we're going to get another house from you. You don't know where you're going to find so another house. So they had house. total control over your life. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, that's terrible. Sure, sure. But I don't know. I, I guess it's good I come through it. Why? I said, maybe it did. Maybe when I got to the place, I could do something for myself. And I was my own boss, I could do it like how I want to do it, and when I want to do right. it. So that makes a big difference to me. Oh, it sure does. You get up early in the morning, you fix your breakfast, you feed your kids, you get to work, tend to your baby, and, and I mean, you, if you got to go to the field, you go to the field, and you work until 12 o'clock, you go home and fix down and come back, and go back to the field, and you work there until so just about sundown. Mm. Just wait, wait, wait. And then you come back and make supper, right? Fix supper. Now after my oldest daughter got old enough to cook, I used to let her go home and fix dinner and uh, fix supper. And she got old enough to cook. Mm -hmm. But before then, I had all that to do. Mm. Plenty of time in the night and people sleeping, I'm washing, uh, ironing, uh, mopping the floors, cleaning the floors and stuff to go to the field the next morning. Mm. Them cotton days, yeah. they were tough. Mm -hmm. Girl, they was tough. Mm -hmm. 
But we didn't have no choice. We had to try to make a living one way or the other. It was we had that's we had the only way we had to make a living. Do you think it taught you anything those days? I mean <sighs> horrible as they were? Well I don't know. Yeah, this is kind of hard to explain it. It's kind of hard to explain it. Because you, you look back over the thing and then I, I we had to work and then people trying to take advantage of what you're doing, you know, and oh, stuff like that. It's, it's that must have been the worst of it. Some of the worst of it. That was the worst part of it, yeah. That was the worst part of it. Taking advantage of, you know.